Well, with the mechanism running smoothly, it's time to get on to what I'm sure will be the easiest part of the kit, which is the assembly of the body. If experience with the 284 has taught me anything, is that this will go extremely smoothly, or maybe not. In fact, when I was building the 284, pretty much none of the pieces actually fit together. Tabs were off by as much as about an eighth or even a quarter of an inch, so I had to file them off or even drill new holes here and there. And then eventually I got things to fit together. And it turned out pretty nice in the end, but it took an unnecessary amount of work to get there. So there's the main boiler piece. And then, let's see, I also need to get out the smoke box and smoke box door. And those came out nice and clean. And thanks to them being in that airtight seal, they still look brand new. Basically no oxidation on the metal. It is very thin material though, and this is actually a really lightweight boiler, so I don't think this model's gonna weigh too much when it's finished, although it'll be really easy to add more weight inside if I ever wanna do that. At the same time though, I'm not sure I wanna do that because the axles are riding on that soft metal. So anyway, to start off, I need to take off this flash around the edges. It's not too bad so far. There's that seam on the side. Just have to carefully file that away, make sure it stays nice and round. Cleanup's going pretty well so far. There's only a very small pit in that area, which I'll fill in later. So I'm just kind of using a sort of a rolling motion with the file. This is helping to keep the side of it round while filing off that seam. Oh, and by the way, the alloy that Arbor Models used is based on cadmium. So it's best to make sure your hands are cleaned up after handling this stuff. Okay, I've got it mostly cleaned up now. All that's left is the front here. There's one more seam and just a small amount of unevenness, which uh, you can probably see there. So I'm just gonna start by filing that as flat as I can. To really finish that off nice and flat though, I'll just use this piece of sandpaper. This is 600 grit, so it doesn't take it down too fast. But when you use a motion like this, after a couple minutes working on that, it should be a nice flat surface on the front and get as small of a gap as possible when assembling the smoke box to it. That looks nice and flat now. So I'll set that aside and get started on the smoke box here. This doesn't have much flash around it, which is good. There is a tab here on the bottom. I want to be sure not to file that off. That aligns with the slot in the boiler. Let's just file the flash around it. And I don't have to worry about getting this flat. I'm just taking off a bit of flash. Okay, so now checking the fit, line up the tab, just like that, and that looks pretty good. I really don't see any gap at all in there. So I'll continue with cleaning up the rest of it. Just some flash here, that's easy to file flat. And then a small seam around here, most of which will be covered up by the smokestack and headlight. And this down here will of course be covered up by the top of the cylinders. And with the flash and seams off of there, I'll just do the same thing again for the front of this. Sand that down to make sure it's nice and flat. Now I'll clean up the little bit of flash around the smoke box front, which isn't much. It's just a little bit here and there. 
So a light filing around the edge. I think that's all this will need. So at least one part of this kit was easy enough. So now I have to drill the spoke box front for that big tab on there. So I have a 964th bit hooked up to my drill here. I think that'll be a good starting size. If I need to adjust that, I can make it a little bit larger. Looks like that didn't get quite centered on there, so I'll probably have to expand that hole. Yeah, it's not quite going on straight. Actually, it might be safer to use the round file here. Yeah, this way I don't risk hurting myself with the power drill getting caught on that hole, which it seems to be doing very easily. I think part of that is just because of the um, softer grade of metal that this is tends to, sometimes when you're drilling a metal like this, it can sort of form itself around the drill bit. And then it grabs onto it and it's hard to get the drill bit out. Still off. So what I'll do now, I can see which way it's off center pretty easily. So I'll just uh, file it down this way. I'll have to open it up a little more, but then I'll be able to file it down. There we go. There we go. That's a nice flesh fit now. So I'll just take my super glue here, put a few dots around the front. That'll be enough. Make sure that this is perfectly aligned. See, not quite. It's close. That's why I didn't use too much glue. Wanted to be sure I could redo it if I needed. Oh, actually, I should take that glue off of there. Now, when you glue and re glue, that can build up thin layers of glue over time and that in turn will end up causing the part to sit away from where it needs to be so you don't want to let that happen okay trying again make sure this is perfectly aligned there we go that's right where it needs to be And it looks like it's a good flesh fit. And then that goes on the front here. Oh, I see a little seam that I missed. Take that off. Yeah, so this will look pretty good. Before I put these parts together though, I'm gonna drill out the rest of these holes. Now to make sure those holes are the right size, I'm going to go ahead and cut out these detail parts that will be fitting onto them. So that includes the headlight, smokestack, and the domes. A little more detailed shape around the headlight here, so that makes the plastic hard to get off. That one was a little easier. Just a little edge nicked there, though. I don't think I did that. That must have happened before it was even packaged. I think I can straighten that out. Just a bit of careful work with the smooth jaw needle nose pliers. Once that's painted, you should never even notice that it was damaged. I've got most of the drilling done now. So to get the holes to the correct size, I was just matching up the tabs to the different drill bits in my set. So using common sizes, 
I was able to get them to a size that fits well. It's just a tiny bit of looseness there that you can see, but that's all right. These will be glued down anyway, and that'll help me out with uh, moving them left and right a little bit just to make sure they're perfectly aligned. So the last main holes that I'm putting in the boiler here just for the handrails and a 0.8 millimeter drill bit seems to be doing really well for that. Okay, so the drilling is all done, but after taking a closer look, I found that the boiler here does have some pitting around it in certain places, like you can especially see it there. So I'm gonna fill that in and sand it smooth, and that'll help this to look a lot better when it's painted. So to get those filled, I'm just going around there, putting on a thin layer of super glue, liquid type. I've got my uh, baking soda tray here, so I'll just, uh, Roll that in there a little. Brush off the excess. There, so now you can see where things settled. And the baking soda dries the super glue instantly. So now I can just uh, file and sand that down until it's as close to perfectly smooth as possible. Brushing up a little sand in there. That actually reveals that there was quite a bit more pitting than I thought there was. A lot of holes were filled on that when I um, used the super glue. Okay, I think I've got the filling done pretty well. Probably not perfect, but it should at least look good enough when it's painted. So I'm going to go ahead and join these two parts together. I'm just going to use a small amount of glue, though, because of how this is made. I can actually separate the smoke box from the boiler and that will make it easier to paint because I won't have to mask it off. And it should actually look cleaner once it's painted too. But for now, I can at least tack that together with some super glue. And now for the detail parts, I'm gonna start with the smokestack here. So drop a glue on there, and let's see, when I was checking this, it actually had a slight backward lean, or forward, so I'm going to make it backward leaning. It's not quite sticking. I'm going to put the glue right here instead, so then it'll get some on the base of the smokestack. There, now it's holding. So the headlight, I'm going to leave off until after painting because that's going to be black instead of gray like the rest of the smoke box. So that'll just make for easier masking. As for the domes, see I'll go ahead and put on the uh, sand dome next. It'll go right here. So same as for the smokestack, I'll just uh, put some glue around there. Push that in and make sure that is as close to perfectly lined as possible. I'm going to put a little more glue inside of here just to be sure that it doesn't fall off. Because one thing I found with the 284 is that adhesives don't always like to stick to this metal very much. I know if it's the oxidation or just the metal itself, but uh, the adhesion just doesn't seem to be as strong as what I've gotten from some of my other stuff. And then the steam dome goes in the back, and it actually has a small hole here, which um, holds one of the detail parts. Looks like a whistle will go on there. That's a pretty good fit. The alignment looks good. Hold that in place. And same thing, put some glue on the inside. Almost forgot, the bell hanger. Since the bell is separate from the hanger, I can actually put this on right away and then put the bell on later. So when I do put the bell in, it has these uh, little hooks, which are bent in by just grabbing with pliers and then 
squeezing down a little, and then that shapes around the tabs and keeps it all in place. Okay, next up they say to work on the running board. And that is right here in the packaging. Let's see, something's grabbing on around here. Looks like the front. vacuum sealing may have kept the parts well protected, but it also makes them, some of them anyway, difficult to pull out without damage. It's coming though. Come on, come on. Okay, almost got it. All right, finally got that part out. Might have gotten a little deformed. I don't know if that was from my handling it or just how it was made. But that's easy enough to straighten out. So it looks like, I see. So there's a small hole here which will be drilled through and then that will screw into this hole on the bottom of the boiler. Hmm. Those parts aren't exactly lined though, are they? That's going to take some modification. Well, I expected as much. Since I'm not quite sure about the alignment of the boiler in relation to where the cab is going to sit, I decided that I'm going to go ahead and put that aside for now and work on assembling the cab. After messing around with some of the metal a little bit with my soldering iron at 650 degrees, I think I can actually safely solder these parts together without causing any damage to the metal. So I'll just get these aligned the way that they need to be. Got a piece of copper wire here. Well, those are going to keep falling apart, but yeah, I've got this piece of copper wire. I'm going to just kind of wrap this around the parts and then tighten it up a little so that it holds them together. Okay, so that was pretty tedious to put together, but that should at least hold the shape while I'm working on it. I'm sure there was a better way to do that, but just for something quick, it seems to be working. So I'll start out by putting some flux into there. I'll grab the soldering iron. Get some solder onto that. This tip isn't exactly in the best shape. I accidentally left it on for a long time at some point. Should still do the job though. Okay, it looks like the parts are starting to join. That's good. Okay, I've got the joints soldered together. I think that turned out pretty good. may not be my cleanest soldering job, but as long as it holds together and looks all right on the outside, then that's what matters to me. Roof is going to need some bending to fit correctly. That shouldn't be too bad to do, though. Now, yeah, let's see how these fit with each other. Looks like the cab will go right there. Boiler right there. I think I can back the cab up a little bit, and that should still be fine. Okay, looks like there is plenty of room to file these tabs backwards without um, getting a poor fit for the cab. So I'll do just that. File these tabs back until the boiler fits correctly. Turns out the measurements were off enough that I ended up filing those tabs off completely. But now, at least I can fit these parts together. So I did have to do quite a bit of shaping and filing of the roof to make it fit right. It's still not exactly perfect. There's a small gap you can see there. 
it's at least a lot better than it was. That was probably about a millimeter, maybe even a two millimeter gap in some spots. So I had to file the sides down quite a bit. And I was also just kind of bending it back and forth like this, making sure that the sides of it were nice and flat, or at least as close to flat as possible. But I think that's at least good enough now that I can solder it together. So for getting the roof soldered, I've got the front tacked in place so far, and I put more flux in just to aid with the solder flowing. So we get more on there. And just uh, go at it. All right, so thanks to the flux, that got a really good smooth flow of solder inside at both ends. So that cab is going to be really strong now. I don't think I'll be seeing any problems from that. So now it's time to get on to putting the rest together. Now the boiler and walkway are held together with a small 080 screw. There's a spot right here for drilling, so I'll just take care of that real quick. Got the 080 tap. I'll just put a little drop of oil on there. And make sure that hole is threaded. That hole lines up there, and then an 080 flat head screw goes through here, so I'm actually going to um, do a little countersinking there before I put the screw in. I think this bit will do nicely for making that countersink. So I'll just go at that real gently. Slowly. I'm actually barely even touching the hole. And let's see, it should be one of these shorter screws here. fits into the hole just like that. Looks like the head is mostly flush, so that's good. Now just screw that in place. Cab fits there, and it doesn't overhang the back, so that's good. And things are fitting nice and straight there. Now for making things fit correctly, I actually need to take the chassis and get the motor off temporarily. So with the motor off, I can check the fit of all these parts, make sure they go together correctly. This is also where I can finally bring these back. And looking at the instructions, I'm going to have to drill new holes somewhere through here and through these in unmarked locations and tap for 080 screws. So to start out, well, I need to put the screw hole in there too. one. Yeah, that's right. I already tapped the 256 hole into here. Okay, boiler's in place. This is actually starting to look like something. Put the cab on there. It almost looks like a complete model. But before I can do the cab, I have to get these finished. So these will slip right into here. Well, actually it looks like a... Nope, I can do this. Might be a little more filing and fitting to do for these. We'll see. While trying to get things lined up to fit the firebox pieces, I noticed that it just wasn't sitting straight, so I took it back apart to figure out why. And of course, the mounting hole for the boiler is actually off-center, I'd say by at least a millimeter there, maybe more. So I guess all I can do to fix that is to make the hole larger. 
So I'm just going to do that a little at a time with different size drill bits until it finally fits correctly. All right, we're getting there. Just a little more, and I think I can have this sitting straight. And then I can put the firebox on. Instead of using a larger drill bit, I just kind of held the power drill down sideways on there and let the same bit ream it out to an oval shape. It doesn't look that great, but as long as that makes it sit straight, that's what matters to me. Okay, this is looking a little better. Still not quite perfect, but I think the firebox pieces are actually going to force the back to sit straight, so those might all work together to make it just right. So we'll see how that does. So now that I've checked for a proper fit and clearance, I took the wheels off so that I can solder these onto the frame since these hold the body in place. In fact, they'll be doing half the work. I figure that needs to be a good strong joint, so yeah, so yeah, that'll go right there. I'll put that rod back on when I'm done. So I've got it tacked on and back, so now I'll just uh, put a little more flux in here. And then the solder should flow into that joint once it's hot enough. And there's a thick piece of metal, so that's going to take a bit. All right, looks like it's starting. Here we go. Okay, that looks like it's sitting nice and straight on there. And the back can be filed flat easily enough, so that's why I started with the just quick tack weld back there. So now I'll do the same for the other piece and get that all cleaned up. Soldering's done. Now I'm just waiting for it to cool off a little so that I can handle it again. So all I need to do now, I think, is file down the tops of those to make sure they're completely flat. And I can put the wheels back on and get the body mounted and see how this is all going to come together. Okay, I just had to file some little notches out from the back of the boiler and that got things to fit. So now I just need to drill the two holes through here so I can mount the 080 screws through the bottom and that'll hold the back of it in place. Okay, those are on. It tightens down. Okay, I think that should be good enough. Also, while I was checking the motor clearance, I found that the uh, bottom tab of the steam dome here was hitting the top of it, so I cut that down. The rest of this should all be fine. The spar has to be cut out from the center. And that, I think, is done after putting the cab in place. Yeah, so the cab will go right there. So I'll solder that on. And it looks like the main body work will be basically done after that. Cap is attached now. I only soldered the front points and then between the boiler and cab front. So it's only held together at the front, but that still seems to be more than strong enough and the cab's not going to be supporting the weight of the thing anyway. So that should be perfectly safe. Now I'll just cut out this bar and I'll use the uh, cutting wheel to do it. That should make quick work of it. And that takes care of that. Chassis back together. Things seems to be working smoothly. Clearances are really, really close in here. Kind of nervous about the motor hitting the side, but it seems like there's just enough distance to prevent it from doing that. Should be all good. I don't think the flange will be shorting against any details there, but I guess we'll see. Looks like it has enough clearance. Just barely. If it needs any more, then I can improve that. For now, let's uh, see if any more work has to be done on making this actually fit together. And it looks like there is more to do. Okay, I'm guessing it has something to do with this slot in here. All right, so I did have to take quite a bit of material out of that front plate there. 
After doing that, it fit a whole lot better. And then I also found that I could route the wire underneath the motor um, just beside the mounting block. So that gives it some extra clearance. And now the body fits straight onto there. Got that screw inserted, not quite tight. Now the hard part might be these little ones. It's because the magnet from the motor will want to attract them. I think I've got some tweezers somewhere. Or at least these needle nose pliers. That should help. Unless they get attracted too strongly. There, I finally managed to get that in. So I can tighten all three of the screws now. And I'll hook that up real quick just to make sure it's still working correctly. And there's a short circuit. I think I know where it's from. I'm pretty sure the top there was touching the inside of the body, so I put a couple pieces of masking tape on there to insulate it. Now let's get this together and try it again. Okay, just got the body back on. Test two. Seems like something's rubbing inside of there. But at least there's no more short. So it turns out the worm shaft, or the end of the motor shaft, was rubbing right up against there. So all I need to do is file that down a bit, and I think that'll take care of the last little problem. And here we go again. Yeah, that's better. Okay. Things are looking good here. So I think all that's left for this video is I'm going to attach the front pilot pieces here and then call this done. All right, so the two parts they show being put onto the front pilot are, well, the pilot itself, which goes right there. That just needs a couple holes drilled, which is easy enough. They actually put little indicators there, it looks like, but they're in the wrong locations, so I'll just find the right locations myself, which is easy enough. The other part they show is this uh, wood deck, which seems to fit to the top here but it doesn't come forward far enough to actually get to the end of the pilot there. So I don't know if that's the correct position or not. When I was checking the instructions, um, when they show it on here, which you can see, they don't actually describe it in the writing because I was reading through to make sure. And when I was looking at the photo of their assembled model, they didn't, they didn't even put it on themselves. So... I might just leave that off of there until maybe next video or so, or the detailing video. Maybe I can figure something else out for it, figure out how it's supposed to go. For now though, I just need to drill a couple holes and then I can put this on. Holes are drilled. I used a sixteenth of an inch bit just to give myself a little extra wiggle room that's larger than the size of the tabs. So that way, in case I was off, I can get them in there easily. And it looks like I got that right. I also trimmed the tabs down a little shorter so that I wouldn't have to drill too deep and potentially poke through the top. That's all sitting the way it needs to, so I'll just uh, put some glue on and put that on to the model. Make sure that's nice and straight, which it looks like it is. And now that's setting. All right, that looks pretty good, I think. Well, that's gonna be it for this video. Next video, I'll put together the tinder and see if it is just as much of a high quality piece of precision engineering as this.